Hi, this video is for Nova Online Math 161, and we're looking at section 2.2 topic of Intermediate Value Theorem. Determine whether the Intermediate Value Theorem guarantees that the function has a zero on the given interval. Um, in order to do that, we will plug in the left bound and the right bound into the function and check their signs. Okay, look at their signs. So let's first plug in the left end bound of 1 into the function. The function that we have is f of x equals x cubed minus 5x squared minus x plus 10. So when we plug in 1 into this function, we get f of 1 equals 1 cubed minus 5 times 1 squared minus 1 plus 10. Now I'm going to set both of these up and go to the calculator and evaluate both of these. Um, but now let's plug in the second endpoint of 2. So if you plug in 2 into this function, you get 2 cubed minus 5 times 2 squared minus 2 plus 10. Now I'm going to evaluate for their signs, okay? What you want to see is... If one comes out to be positive and the other comes out to be negative, then we know that zero's got to be in between them, okay? So I'm going to go plug these into a scientific or, well, calculator right here. So look, I'm doing 1 cubed minus 5 times 1 squared minus 1 plus 10. So when I plugged in 1 into the function, it came out to be positive 5. Now I'm going to copy this and this time plug in. Two into this function, 2, change all of those to 2, and that came out to be negative 4. Oh, it's going to happen. So what will happen is that, you know, if you have a graph that is up at 5, and the next point you need to go down to negative 4, guess what number you have to go through? If you're going from a positive number down to the negative number, in between them, the intermediate value theorem states that you must go through it's a zero here, okay? So I'm going to say determine whether uh, this value, this theorem um, guarantees that the function has a value. Yes, it will. So my answer will be yes because f of 1 is positive and f of 2 is negative. So f of x must be 0 at one point, at some point, or one point, oh, I'll say at one point, in between um, 1 and 2 x equals 1 and 2. So I hope that makes sense. And you know, since I had a graphing calculator up here, we can go ahead and check it too. Now take a look. If I go ahead and just graph this, and I know on your exam, you guys won't be able to use your graphing calculator, but we can look at it as we are kind of learning and talking about this. Now look at this graph for me. I'm going to plot x value of 1, x equal, or maybe I can just do this. I will graph it just from x of 1 and x of 2. So look at this graph, okay? When x is 1, the y value is up at 5. When x is 2, the y value is down at negative 4. So in order for this function to have that positive and negative y value, they gotta have a 0 in between. If you are going from positive to a negative number, you definitely have touched the zero in between at some point. So that's what this intermediate value theorem will tell us. But look, if you graphed a function, now let's say that I change the domain a little bit. Um, hold on, I'm just gonna change it a little bit. What if I'm looking at it from five to six? Oh no, maybe not. Um, oh, look at this. If you are just looking at it from two to three of this function, one y value is negative four, and the other y value is also negative 11. Both of them have the same sign of negative 11. So we don't, it's not going to be guaranteed that it's going to hit zero at one point because they're both down in the negative. So when you do the intermediate value theorem, okay, 
if the signs of the y values comes out opposite, then you know zero happened in between. But if they're both positive, or if they're both negative, then zero is not guaranteed.